Permanent residents of Rawlina. Phil and his new mate, Mr. Ed. Nice. Nice. He likes apples. More, sir. Oh. Oh. There is a tooth up the top somewhere. Yes, slobber dobber. <laughs> so, how long ago were you here? Four years, five years. So he's been here around at least that long. Oh, yeah. It's very good. Cool. All right, we've just spent a night at Raw Linner. Uh, took all day yesterday to get here. A few mishaps, a few adventures. But it's done. Uh, we got Phil bogged. Well, he got himself bogged. We got him unbogged. Uh, he was in a world of pain there for a while. So today, Rolina uh, to Hague to Cockle Biddy. So we're anticipating it's not going to take too long. But we didn't expect yesterday to take too long either. We've had. Uh, oh, there's a fly. We'll get rid of him. We've had uh, Telstra coverage, which has been good been in contact with uh, the family at home and uh, now we're heading east along the trans Australian railway line Let's see what today brings today we only had to travel from rural Inner down to Cocklebiddy and decide what to do from there but it's here that my dash cam fails the one in the front of this lot's got a joey in its pouch Whoop. It's an easy 170 kilometres, just a few hours, so we thought. The Trans-Australian Railway is the main rail freight line connecting us here on the western side of the country via Perth and Kalgoorlie to the east via Port Augusta in South Australia. Over 1,700 kilometres and most of it's straight. on this trek that uh, the women would be catering, the men would be logistics. You see, Neil is holding bread and Phil is cooking sausages, so obviously there's, a, there's an issue going on here.
that is blasting up this track and I notice there's big depression here. And we are in Cocklebiddy and there's lots and lots of caves and things around here. So is this an entrance to a cave? Well, I think it is. There's water, oh, that's the water from there running in. Oh, look at that. All right, let's have a listen. Not that far. Anyway, it turned out to be another muddy, wet drive. The going was slow. Almost every gate we went through, and there was a few, were boggy and wet. There were a few dry ones like this, and then my trailer broke. So it was all too good to be true. The trailer has let me down. See the wheels? Come around this side. And this side here. A U-bolt on the suspension which I thought was going to cripple me. Turned out the repair went quicker than I thought. A lot of nuts were loose. My faith in the trailer has diminished. Will I make it home? Conditions were slow going. The track went from very wet to very dry. Finally, after many hours, the gate that led us to the highway. It's 
smooth bitchy. Cockle Biddy Roadhouse were fantastic. We arrived around 6.30, we had booked some rooms and pre-booked dinner. Everyone there was very helpful and accommodating. A shower and a bed was very nice. Next morning, Phil's birthday, we headed west to Norseman after a cooked brekkie and fuel. We stopped along the way at Kaguna Blowhole. and then later at Baladonia for lunch. A long, straight, smooth drive. Arriving at Norseman, we checked into a caravan park, cleaned some more gear, and we watched the grand final on TV. On Sunday morning we headed to Woodlands Campsite, a very nice relaxing place. We just mucked about, did a bit of cooking and cooked an awesome chocolate cake. Monday morning and the others decided to go to Esperance. I'm still a bit nervous about the trailer, so I'm heading west and home. All right, I'm gonna do this walk on uh, Mount Disappointment. 1.9 kilometers, shouldn't take too long. Some interpretive plaques along the way, telling a story. Let's uh, have a butcher's hook, eh? 
bit of lizard on there. Blends in well with the moss and the rock. You can see him? Wow, that's amazing. So when it rains, the water sort of valleys down the fault line in the rock, and in the fault lines, things happen. They form little pits or nama holes. And these nama holes can get quite deep, so the water can be in there for quite some time. It's a great source of water for birds particularly, but also kangaroos and Aboriginals used to use them. Look at this guy bobbing his head up and down, just sussing me out, sniffing the air. There's been quite a few of these. Sunning themselves on the rock, buggering off when I get close. So why do these trees survive on here, you ask? Well, I have the answer. This is a Colanthamus tuberous. And as the name suggests, it's a large tuberous root which act like rainwater tanks. And they trap soil particles as well. And then they keep growing, pushing rock apart, collecting more water, collecting more soil. And you get these little outcrops of plants. So that's quite interesting. This is a nama, which means rock hole in Aboriginal. But they have, when they fill up with water, they're very quick life cycles. They even have shrimp in here. Uh, tadpoles, obviously. And then the tadpoles and shrimps and frogs get fed on by uh, lurds and birds and lizards. And it's only a very short life cycle, so it can only be months or, or weeks that this thing fills up with water and supplies life to so many ranges of uh, animals and insects. This one looks a bit different. Looks like tables and chairs gnomes or hobbits or something. Well, hang on a minute. What's that? So I've come to Lake Johnson on the northern side of the Northern Hyden Road. Just interested to know what this is about. So I read back on the plaque up there that seawater is 35 parts per million salty. This is meant to be 240 parts per million salty. <laughs> oh, oh, that is fucking horrible. That's like a salt water gargle. Ugh. So the next little walk on today's list is McDermott Rock Walk. Meant to be like wave rock, apparently. Let's find out. As you can well imagine, there wasn't a lot of water around in the early days. So they used to uh, build these walls to dam the Nama holes. Apparently they even used to get stock up here. Stopped at a few places along the way and spent the night at McDermott Rock, a nice place to camp. Well, I've ended up at a place called The Breakaways. Apparently Aboriginals have been coming here for millennia, so I might just go have a bit of a wander around myself. The next morning I stop at The Breakaways before I hightail it for home. Mm -hmm. 